Aggers, what an extraordinary day you've seen. We certainly have. And I think it's important to make the distinction, you know, about this not just necessarily being another batting collapse. This has been a very green pitch. The ball's moved around all over the place. Uh, there were some pretty devilish deliveries bowled early on. In fact, I think England could have lost even more, really. You know, there were orders from the government, no less, to make sure that the grounds would kept some grass on and, and, and made this more of a sporting pitch than the two that we've seen so far. And, and, and the grounds weren't obliged. So it's, it's more of a question, in a way, about how long that help will be available to the bowlers. We saw that remarkable uh, last wicket partnership between Jack Leach and Saki Mahmood, worth 90. I mean, it's like a scorecard, if you like. It's been turned round on its head. So from 90 for eight, England were bowled out for 204. The last two wickets adding 114. But, but much of that was because this ball has went so soft that A, it was easy to to defend against but B you could hardly hit it off the square it, was, it made a horrible sound like a cloth almost that came off the bat and that's something England have to be very wary of tomorrow they've got to make best use of this new ball when, when, they, when they come to bowl because you get 45 maybe 50 overs out of it and the question is will it, it still be doing that in, in the morning you know, it was very fresh uh, pitch this morning green grass well under the heat here today it's, it, it, it has browned off a bit but yes yeah, 67 for 7 90 for 8 you know it, it, it is tempting to think oh here we go we're back to the ashes but you know you, you, you have to keep context on this and it was a good decision by the West Indies to, to bowl first and it was very challenging for the batsmen well, I, I have to say I guess when I woke up this morning I wasn't following all the way through the night but I saw that scorecard and uh, there is that sense of familiarity, despite the fact seven changes from the side that played that final Ashes Test match in Australia, and yet similar themes, similar struggles. But, as you say, there is a little bit of a different context. Talk to us about this ball, because it's a Duke's ball that they use in England, but it's slightly different, a hybrid, is that right? Well, it's sort of a semi-Duke, yes. I mean, it's, it's, it's not as shiny, the seam isn't as pronounced, uh, and I don't think it's, it's as durable as the Duke's ball that they use at home. They're just trying to get a ball here in the Caribbean. It's the second series, actually, that England have used it here um, that, that just does a little bit more, but w without it being like, like an English Duke, if you like. So they're, they're trying to give the bowlers some help. And certainly, I mean, if you'd had a, a, a full 100% Duke's ball this morning that really would have caused caused problems I think so it, it, I mean it did enough but it, but it, it does go soft and so it was, it was almost like a, a day of two halves really that, those, those first 45 50 overs when England were all over the place and in real trouble you know, there, there, were, there were a couple of poor shots and of course everyone uh, was, was dismissed I mean Zach Crawley again driving uh, out to extra cover that was a disappointing dismissal when he and Lees had battled away for what 13 overs uh, done the hard work in a way but then he, he drove rather loosely I said that Ben Stokes's shot was disappointing it was a miss pull it was a short ball from Joseph he completely mistimed the pull shot and was caught and bowled but the others you know if you look at the way they got out it was it was it was fair bowling and it was it, there, there were there were edges and nicks and there was a, a ball and folks got a really good one that nipped back at him you know, there, there was there was a lot going on so it, it's it's not really a performance to be that hypercritical of if you're sitting and watching but I think it, it, you know, what, what it does show what it has demonstrated is how much easier it does, it does get to bat when that ball gets soft and, and, and you, know, you, you look at that scorecard and it absolutely just, just illustrates that doesn't it the, the partnership for the final wicket between Jack Leach and Saqib Mahmood how much was it down to that ball deteriorating how much was it good batting well a bit of both I mean you know, a bit gutsy you're going in there in a, in a horrible situation when, when they came together, 114 for nine uh, when Chris Wokes was out. But he'd already put on 24 with Leach and that at the time seemed like a good partnership. But no, I mean, you've got to be honest. I mean, yeah, part of it is because of that soft ball and you can just stand up and play it. And it wasn't doing very much. And their confidence just grew. I mean, you know, Jack has been there before, hasn't he? You know, he's... he's, he's He's you know, played really well against Ireland. Uh, and, of course, who could forget the Headingley match in 2019? So, I mean, he's the ideal person to have there, really, as a rear guard action. He's, he's been there and done it. He, know what, he knows what you have to do. Saqib, well, a number 11, really? I mean, he only averages 12 in first-class cricket. He's never hit a six before in first-class cricket. And he, he, he hit one of those today, a, a ball after he was dropped. Uh, he, he, he does seem a very confident character. You know, I mean, he's come here, obviously, as, as a bowler. And we've enjoyed watching him. He played in the last Test match, and he bowled he bowled sharply. He's he's, he's got a lot about his game, um, and so perhaps no real surprise that he, he he did stand up there, if you like, when the pressure was really on, and and, and put on those those ninety potentially crucial runs. I mean, if the pitch is to, is going to go around uh, like it did this morning, tomorrow morning, 
those 90 runs could be could be absolutely critical but England again they've got to make sure that when if, if if they get to that stage where the ball is soft well for a start they try and get rid of it I was, I was surprised that the West Indians I think they just thought they were just going to roll England over towards the end it didn't bother but yeah they didn't they didn't try and change that ball at all as you often see bowling teams try and do you know get the, the umpire gets the rings out and everything and they try and get a shot of it and get something that's a bit harder they, they didn't do that that was a, a bit of a surprise they were just counting down to that to that new to that new ball but no we're going to be a very interesting morning tomorrow Henry well, let's have a listen to uh, the thoughts of Saqib Mahmood. He uh, made 49, as you say, I guess, and you spoke to him at the close of play. Saqib, well played. I mean, you must be... What's the sort of disappointment level in getting out for 49? Yeah, I mean, obviously very disappointed at the time I got out, head down sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I think obviously the partnership me and Leach put on was was massive for us in the game. Uh, we obviously took a little bit of advantage as that ball got softer. Um, you know, got bowlers back into their sort of third and fourth spells. Um, and yeah, just uh, stuck out there and, and made it hard work for them. Yeah. I mean, a man with an average of 12, highest score, well, you've beaten that as well. I mean, to put it all into context, that's, that's quite a day. Yeah, I mean, I, I did look at the scoreboard when I was on 12 and thought I've got my average year. Um, but yeah, look, obviously we just um, we just tried to take it in little bursts there. Uh, you know, there was times where we were sort of in 20 run partnership and 30 runs and then sort of that 10 overs before the new ball, uh, we knew they'd obviously have a little bit of sting out of their attack. They'd have to bring part-time bowlers on and I felt that's where we really cashed in. Uh, you know, Leachy as well, I thought he played exceptionally well. Uh, you know, we obviously picked the right balls to take on and, and respect to the good balls as well. So, um, yeah, all in all, I thought it was a great partnership for us. Now, Jack's been there before. I mean, he must have talked you, talked you through this, did he? Yeah, I mean, you could see he was coming down. We were both chatting to each other. Uh, but look, it was just a case of obviously staying out there and, you know, we just had small targets. You know, 20 run partnership, 30 run partnership, get to 150. Um, and before you know it, you start getting in and, and it gets a little bit easier and, and the run rate sort of went a little bit quicker after that. So, uh, but now it was good for now there with Leachy. Uh, not, not a great deal of fun when it was quite dark and, you know, yeah. they had Dilzari bowling with the second new ball, but um, now it was good for them. What was it like though when those wickets were clattering? What, seven for 44? Did it feel like that sort of pitch and those sort of conditions for that? Yeah, I mean, obviously, look, some of the balls the batters got were, were almost unplayable. The ball Ben Folks got swung away and it back. As a bowler, you're taking that every time and, you know, you're not keeping those out as batters. So, look, it was a pretty calm dressing room throughout, I felt. Both sides wanted to bowl on that wicket, so it tells you a little bit about the wicket. And, um, you know, we'll get our chance to bowl on it tomorrow, so hopefully they're still a bit in their first session. Yeah. Well, that's the big question, isn't it? I mean, clearly that ball got very soft. You could hardly hit it off the square. It made a horrible sound. The second new ball, though, was that, was that skimming through like you'd, like you'd want it to? Yeah, look, there was obviously lateral movement with that second new ball um, and it shows obviously the key of making inroads early doors but I think it's obviously staying disciplined as well. You saw obviously they picked up three wickets in that first session but in the middle session is where they really did their damage and that was just by holding their length, staying disciplined um, and you can get your rewards so that's the same case for us tomorrow. Great challenge for all of you, inexperienced attack, big day tomorrow, are you looking forward to it? Yeah, definitely. I mean, obviously, look, there's a bit more in this wicket than there was in Barbados, but same things apply. Uh, hopefully, we've just got a little bit of assistance and, um, yeah, we can keep challenging them. Saqib Mahmood speaking at the close of play after England were dismissed on day one in Grenada for 204. Mahmood making 49. Chatting to Jonathan Agnew, his in Grenada for us alongside Dean Wilson of the Daily Mirror. Dean, we've seen plenty of batting collapses uh, from England in recent times, but Agus says this is a slightly different one. What, what, what do you think the overall sense is out there that, uh, that, that, you know, is this an England side that is just struggling to find a little bit of strength in that middle order, or do we have to almost just forget today because of the, the circumstances, the conditions? Well, I don't think they should completely forget today because, uh, you know, the fact is that numbers two to, to seven all made single figure scores. And, uh, you know, that's not <laughs> the ideal situation, especially as Ag has mentioned, you know, where the ball here, you, we know it gets softer and, and it is not as effective. And, and it's a bit of a, a, a patient, a waiting game to try and make sure you're still there to take advantage of that. Obviously, this time the, the batters were, were unable to do so. But I think that they will still have to ask a few questions of themselves here because it is a familiar trait. I do think, well, I, was, I was sort of thinking to myself that the, the interim head coach is Paul Collingwood. Um, now, there was a guy that when he was a player, absolutely was a man for a crisis he was the, the sort of the dogged uh, middle order batsman who would go in and, and kind of put a stop to to a batting collapse and I just wonder what sort of techniques he might try and uh, instill into into the team while he's in charge to try and uh, avoid the same and, and, and I, I think possibly today the disappointment might have been that 
you know, senior batsmen like Ben Stokes and Johnny Bairstow, who have played so beautifully thus far on this tour. Um, really, you look to, to those kind of players to to be the ones, like they were in Sydney, to be the ones to to, to put a stop to the, the panic that, that engulfs the dressing room when the wickets are falling, uh, and they they were unable to do that. So, yeah, I'm not I'm not going to let them get away uh, scot free because uh, you know it it does make a difference. But um, yeah, there was some good bowling in there as well, using the conditions the pitch offered a bit, um, and and England's bowlers will want to do the same. Yeah, Agus, what will those England bowlers be thinking ahead of tomorrow? And again, are we going to see those questions about Jimmy Anderson and Stuart Broad asked if things go <laughs> not quite as they expect them to with that new ball? Yeah, well, that's the, that's the thing, isn't it? I mean, those two would both have been a real handful on this pitch. You can't, you can't, you, know, you can't deny that. There's no point in it. I mean, I think they would have they would, they would have really created problems. But you know, the idea of this tour, from England's perspective, you know, you can argue about that selection. We, we, we've, sort of, we've sort of done that in a way. But if you talk to England, it is precisely because they want to see how these inexperienced bowlers, the replacements, if you like, are going to perform. So as you heard me there say to Saki, you know, this is this is an experience. There's him and there's Overton and there's Wokes and there's Stokes and there's of course, there's Leach to bowl to, to bowl the bowlers spin. You know, obviously Wokes and, and Stokes have been around a while, but o- Overton and Saqib, let's see how they go when the pressure's on. And you haven't got that many runs in the bank, um, and if you aren't breaking through, and and there is a bit of a stand coming, and you know that ball's going to get soft. Well, Saqib does bring something else. He brings reverse swing to it. If that indeed we're going to find that here, it's quite lush. Um, so we'll have to wait and see if he can if he can find that. But it's, it's going to be a real test for them. You know, this is the sort of challenge that England set. So, in a way, does it depend on this result, whether Broad and Anderson come back? No, uh, no. But it might highlight, it might highlight their absence if, if these bowlers don't bowl West Indies out tomorrow. Dean, on that, if this tour is being used a little bit and there's an experiment to see that next generation of fast bowlers, is there something to be said oddly to think that England have been bowled out cheaply and actually there's a little bit more pressure on those bowlers, as Agus says, to get their opportunity to see how they cope with not many runs to defend. Yeah, definitely. I think that's uh, going to be a, a really interesting uh, thing to see tomorrow. Um, how they, yeah, how they take the opportunity to, to to grab a game by the sort of scruff of the neck. You know, one of the features of the England team in recent times with Anderson and Broad has been the way in which the bowlers have managed to make up for some poor batting performances. So um, that is a job that they've done brilliantly for for, for many a year and. And actually now, um, as you say, you've got some new faces there, whether, uh, whether Mahmood, Overton, uh, Wokes, and of course Stokes, um, who's been around for a while, can do that will be will be fascinating. And, and we know that they're going to have a bit of help. We know that the the pitch is offering something, and, and and probably will offer a little more in the morning as well. You know, once the before the sun kind of really has its impact on the on the pitch. Um, you know, can they make that difference? And the fact that they're going to be starting first thing in the morning, I think, is a good thing for them. So they've got it all laid out in front of them. Um, we'll, we'll be watching with interest to see how they go. As I saw on social media, Stuart Broad and Jimmy Anderson have been playing the old course at St Andrews and having a round of golf as this, uh, as this game has been taking place over the last few hours or so. Uh, there is a lot of pressure on these bowlers that will see this as a big opportunity, but there's also pressure on Joe Root and the, and the selectors that, that have made the choice to leave Anderson and Broad out. And they've got to, they'll be hoping more than anything that tomorrow that it goes well for these young bowlers. Well, they will because they are, they are trying to you know, create. We keep hearing about the opportunities, and, and this you know it's, it's kind of become the mantra, uh, really, of, of, of this of this tour. But but by the same token, I've not heard anybody on this tour say that Jimmy Anderson and Stuart Brawl will not return. In fact, I, I, I hear from, from the, the people I've been talking to, it's when they return. So I I, I really don't think that that they've been finished off. But well, there's two things. If if these young bowlers win the game here. And then go home having won the series. That will put a bit more of a question mark against those two coming back. But if they don't do it here, people are saying, "Well, why on earth aren't Broad and Anderson there? Get them back straight away." And I'm and, and I'm sure they will be because they are they are the best about. So yeah, there's, there's a lot a lot riding on this game. I think. Agus Dino, thank you. Rum punches this evening in Grenada. I trust. 
Well, uh, I Eventually. think it might be a, a, a lime and soda, maybe something like that. Lime and uh, soda. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, well it, interestingly, we did spot the. Uh, you have a lime and soda. We did spot the, the tail enders guys uh, here. Uh, I think they've managed to make it out minus Jimmy Anderson, and I, I think that they they like a drink. So maybe we'll try and find them for a bit of company later. Well, enjoy Grenada, gents. Thank you very much indeed. All the details of that first day of the third test match on the BBC Sport website and app where you can see that extraordinary scorecard. Jack Leach, 41 not out, so keep my mood. 49, the final wicket to fall. And England, uh, as I say, 204 all out, recovering from a pretty bleak position early on in the innings. <laughs>